much if you can, uh, today we'll be talking about doubts and if somebody told me two years ago that I would study doubts, pigeons, I would uh, say never, never in my life, not such simple words, <laughs> but here I am and I will be talking about that because they are not so bad. Uh, okay, so uh, functions of sound in birds are quite well recognized and in birds in temperate regions where usually males are singing, they are usually sing to attract the male or to uh, the pet territory. The situation is uh, more complicated in areas such like tropics where uh, 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 many bird species are sedentary and we have around uh, 400 species which are uh, producing songs in duets, so male and female, and, and even chorusing. And such a um, function of such uh, more complicated coordinated signaling are uh, uh, coordination of behavior or hair cohesion, so it's, it's much more complicated. But to all this function, uh, there are necessary some mechanisms which just uh, allow, for example, to recognize if this is my species or not, to uh, recognize individuals, to efficient territorial defense, for example. And today, in my talk, I will, be, I will focus on this uh, two uh, uh, mechanisms of species recognition and, and individual recognition in the species. Uh, and <laughs> one more point about these stupid pigeons. So they are not learners, so they are much less flexible in uh, sound production than such birds like the stings or, or, or parrots or hummingbirds. So the, the question in background is how they are doing this, how they are territorial, how they attract to make without such flexibility. And the story started in fact when we were uh, working together with our group in, in Cameroon uh, some years ago uh, on different species, different topics, but, but we were opportunistically recording all species around, mostly endemics, but also some uh, common species like Hamburita. And later, one of my master's uh, students uh, was using this data to, to find out if it's possible to uh, discriminate between different individuals uh, in the species. So we measured several things like the entire song, duration, number of notes, uh, also uh, we measured precisely the note duration, uh, the frequency, and pauses between, between uh, notes. And if it's possible to do this automatically for this species, so it's quite fast. And what we found was very interesting. We found that if we measured only the uh, first five syllables, especially the uh, houses between notes in the song, we were able to discriminate with 95% uh, accuracy uh, between individuals, and the data set was uh, 43 individuals and of uh, over 500 songs, if I remember well. We also find out that if we measured uh, uh, um, sequences of five notes <coughs> along the, uh, along the uh, song, uh, uh, so the, the number on the uh, next axis, the one indicate notes from one to five to notes from two to six, and so on, uh, uh, we found that uh, the most information about the identity of individuals is only at the beginning of the song. So we can say that uh, this initial uh, uh, part of the song is something like a finger prints for this for this uh, uh, down. So the aim of the, uh, of the next project, because of this initial study, was to, to find out if uh, this is the same in the all uh, two. two. With the species, we had five species in, in Africa, so uh, they are they are cool in, in sub-Saharan Africa and in, in many places we have two, three, or even four species within the same area. Uh, they differ slightly in, in size, so these two on the left, so Tamburin Daf and the New are uh, a little bit heavier than than the other three, and they differ also according to habitat selection. So the, the first two are uh, 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 preferred forest, especially the uh, blue-headed one, is the second of this picture, and, and the other three uh, 
species like the blue spotted and the uh, emerald dust, which is here also in Kruger, and the uh, black uh, wood duck. Mm, they prefer different types of woodlands, savanna, myombana, and so on. Okay. And here we have some of these old species. I will play only. I will play only the, the one because some styles are quite long, so this will take 30% uh, of my talk to play all of them. <laughs> As you can see, they are very simple. They, they consist of uh, short syllables, and some species uh, have some modulation uh, in tones, frequency is very low. So, uh, for this project, we were uh, doing uh, uh, recordings in several countries in, in Africa. We were also catching birds using, using uh, 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 live tags to, to find out if we are recording the same individual to check if they are changing something, either some during the singing, because for most of the time, especially for this forest species, we cannot see the individual in the canopy. And we, of course, also uh, finally uh, did some uh, flight experiments, and one of them is presented on the poster of, of Russia. So, what we what we find out? So, if we look on the uh, uh, song duration and compare the species, you can see that they are different, but also overlap quite heavily. So, it's, if we uh, <laughs> use the discriminant analysis to recognize only based on duration between the species, so it's not a very uh, uh, good result. If we do this with the number of nodes within the song, uh, uh, the discrimination analysis is a little bit better, uh, and as you can see, most pairs of the species are not overlapping. If we do this with the uh, uh, frequency of uh, maximal amplitude, Again, is the results of the uh, analysis is a little bit above the 50 percent. But if we put all these three uh, characteristics together, we can recognize, uh, we can classify the sum to particular species with uh, 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 50, uh, 82 percent uh, correctness. So, uh, based on this, we can say that they are uh, the sums are very similar between these. Uh, Type species, but there are some differences. The forest and bigger species uh, have lower frequency songs, longer, with uh, uh, higher number of nodes. Uh, uh, I'm not going to talk too much about amplitude now, but we also know that the song of the of the forest species is, is much better propagating. So you can hear as a human even from uh, the distance, like 500 meters. For the uh, for the uh, woodland species, it's, it's twice shorter, uh, but this will be important information for the later part of the talk. So, so maybe there's something more different, uh, which is differentiating both species and individuals. If you look into details of the uh, node sequences, similarly like we did for the uh, tamborita. So, if you can just look. The, uh, uh, the sonographs of all species, it's quite clear that the beginnings are much more different than the final parts. And the final parts, usually, even if there is some change, it, it, it's quite constant. For example, it's, it's faster and faster, but the, the duration of syllables are usually the same. Uh, and in the initial part, usually, we have, uh, we have, we have uh, uh, Groups of, of, of syllables, some kind of blocking, or in the such species like the emerald wood duck, we have also some slow modulation of, of frequency. Uh, this this graph are showing this in, in, in detail. So you have the colors which all all the time indicates from the uh, deep green to the yellow from the forest to the savanna habitat. So note duration is always decreasing for all the species from the beginning of the song. 
the same is uh, for, for most of the species with the pulse duration except one. If we look at the peak frequency, usually it's also, also really uh, quick in the sun, but one of the species, namely the blue spotted one, uh, the, the Tortu apparis has a tricky snake shape on, on, this, on this graph. And what was really uh, the most interesting for us is the relative anti. So uh, on this graph we have the, uh, the zero on the uh, y-axis means that this is the, the lowest part of the circle. So each syllable, each note was just measured uh, uh, and compared to, to this part. So as you can see, the beginning of some of most of the species, and especially this living in savanna, is really quiet. Here we have just smooth the uh, line, which is an average for, for the 500 songs. But uh, the, the maximum uh, uh, lowest value we had was minus 32 decibels at the beginning. So this means that the, the range, at the active range of the signal for the whole songs and for some parts of the songs are really different. And of course, this was this was uh, 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 significantly different between between the species if you compare initial and, and final part of the song. So uh, let's move to to more discriminant analysis. So uh, on this slide, you can compare efficiency of, of uh, discrimination uh, for the all species, the, the uh, darker part, and for uh, discrimination of different individuals within the species uh, based on these uh, three basic song characteristics so only the number of notes, duration, and maximum amplitude. So it's, it's pretty, pretty nice. If we do the same, but we consider only the, the pauses between the, uh, the, the following initial and final syllables, and we stay with comparison of uh, uh, different species and discrimination to different individuals within the species, we can see quite a nice pattern. Namely, in the forest species, we have a situation where is the more ID information at the beginning of the song, and in these uh, uh, species which are singing uh, uh, with lower amplitude, and the, uh, the last part of the song is more relatively uh, more uh, louder, uh, uh, the final part of the song uh, contain more uh, signature about ID, and here is also this comparison of this initial and final part with the uh, relative amplitudes. So to, to, to summarize this result, the results, the conclusion. So the, the four species have, um, have lower frequency sounds, longer sounds, only slightly lower amplitude at, at the very beginning, but usually this is only the first one, two, or three syllables, not, not the rest. Uh, the the Savannah species has higher frequency sound width and shorter, and the beginning of the sound is really substantially uh, more quiet than the, than the middle and final part of the sound. Uh, so it seems that uh, there's a difference between these two groups of species with uh, uh, locating identity information within the song. Uh, so it seems that the evolution of song in this, in this distinct group of, of that was shaped by the body size, especially with the frequency, but also with the habitat of where they live. And it seems that there is a difference in, 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 uh, in differentiation in these songs. Uh, they seem to maximize the information transfer, transfer about the species ID, let's say, which is useful for, for uh, uh, discriminating between all and the other species, especially if you are living in the same area. And if information about the identity seems to be optimized. It's not at the the maximum level uh, it could be if these parts which contain this information would be louder. So, uh, so this was the basic study which uh, was used for us to, to, uh, to uh, prepare experiment, experiments. So we are after, after the experiments with three species in which we tested 
how they are responding to the own species and to the other species. In Simpa 3, our part 3, we also use some uh, different mixed songs uh, which take part from one species and from the other. So some of the, of the results are from the poster and some are just, we finished preparing them uh, two weeks ago. And in this, in this next year, we, we are apply, planning to do the experiments with neighbors, just, just classic neighbor stranger <coughs> discrimination, but we will be also modifying some parts of the song to find out how birds are responding if we change uh, the part which we suggest is used, for example, for, uh, for coding ID. And at the end, I would like to thank uh, institutions which are supporting us in our study. Thank you.